Hi guys, hope you're all well. Welcome to this video, a short quick video which is practically based upon the question I had on my last video which was how do you break a long extended fast and I think that's a good question and it's very important which is why I want to quickly address it in this video. Now here at True North they um, have a program for refeeding and how you refeed or how you move on to food, solid foods depends upon the number of days that you have fast. For example, if you have done up to seven to 10 days of fasting, then they'll put you on the juice program for a day and then you'll move on to raw fruits and then so on. If you've done more than 10 days, then they'll expect you to go on a raw juice program for two days and then raw for two days and then so on. This is the sheet here, which is very useful, which they use as a guide. So um, what happens is, is that when you break your fast, the next day is that they'll deliver juices to your door. That's four juices between nine, 12, three and five. And the green juices, watermelon, some mixed with apple, absolutely delicious. So they do that for you. Then the next day, I mean, if you've done seven to ten days, it'll be the next day. If you've done two, if you've done more than ten, then it'll be two days after. They will put you on raw fruits and raw juicy vegetables like lettuce, greens, cucumbers. And this is for the standard refeeding program. If you are sensitive, then you wouldn't do the raw. You will do the steamed zucchini, steamed squash or blended soups. After you've done that, on the third phase, they will put you on raw fruits and raw vegetables again, but this time you can include more steamed vegetables. You can have light soups, but without no grains. You can have potatoes, yams, squash, pre-made salads and cold foods. And then the following day, you can add legumes to your diet, some dressings, some thick soups, and then on phase five, you're pretty much restricted, so you can include the grains, the nuts, and desserts, and so on. And if you are highly sensitive, the program's a little bit different, similar, but a little bit different. So that's how it works. Um, yeah, so if you are going to do a long extended fast, that's the best way to break your fast, as I understand it. My advice to you, seriously though, that fasting is not an easy thing. I'll make that clear. Um, if you're going to do over 7 to 10 days just water, I really do advise that you go to a centre or be around someone who can medically supervise you, especially if you do have a condition. So please don't take this lightly. Also, before you fast, it's very important that you prepare. So I'd say if you're going to do a long fast, if you're, if you're planning to do a long fast, my advice will be to eat very clean for a month. Like, so just eat no refined flours, you know, processed sugars and so on. Just keep it clean because that will make your fast a lot easier. So please bear that in mind. And everyone is different. I mean, I managed to do 14 days on my own and then fly out to America, still in my fasted state. But not everyone can do that. And as I've mentioned before, my diet has always been pretty clean. I've done a 10 day water fast before last year. So I pretty know my body well, but everyone's not up to that. Everyone's different. So please, please just be aware of that. Another point I want to quickly address is, on my last video, I spoke about um, my time here thus far and how they do yoga. And some people are a bit worried about it. Now they make it clear this is a non-religious center, as I understand it. So the focus is not on any religion. Their philosophy is simply just to help people get better. And here you have classes. You have about three classes per day, but you don't have to go to the classes. It's like when you go to a play group or a, it's like when you go to, um, to college or something, you may enroll in some classes, you don't enroll in some classes, you know, you depend what you want to do. And out of all the classes, yoga is probably about 5 to 10%. 
And I believe they're not doing it from an agenda to like convert you to some sort of spiritualism thing. I believe they probably they just genuinely think it's good for the body in terms of the stretches that it does. And the stretches, it is good to stretch, it is good for your body. It's just Satan has managed to sort of twist and turn it around. But I'm going to do another video on yoga regarding that. So just bear that in mind. So yeah, it is offered as a class. But you don't have to attend. I don't force you to do anything. It's pretty much up to you. You know, it's like if you're going to um, a hotel, for example, they might be drinking downstairs. Are you going to drink alcohol? No, you're not. You know, you just use wisdom. Um, I work in a secular environment. They're drinking tea and coffee all over the place and all manner of foods that I don't eat, which they offer to me. Am I going to take it? No. Do you get what I mean? So. I don't believe in the philosophy where, because some people are trying to say this, is that you should only go to certain Adventist institutions in terms of health and so on, when I personally don't agree with that. I mean, ideally it will be nice, but number one, the diet and the advice they offer here, apart from that, they don't even talk about yoga, but in terms of the dietary, oh, in terms of the dietary options that they offer here, like plant-based, is is the best that I've ever come across in terms of all the um, health centres that I've been to. Bear in mind, they specialise in water fasting. It's medically supervised water fasting, and not many centres offer medically supervised water, uh, water fasting. I've done a lot of research. I couldn't find any that I felt comfortable going to, apart from this one, because I do a lot of research. I looked into the director. I looked at what they teach. Um, and I'm impressed, you know, with their resume, so to speak. And even the person who owns the centre, Dr. Alan Goldhammer, he looks amazing for his age. They're a good example in terms of what they do. Far better than many professors, certain Adventists, even in present truth, in terms of the health message. They are, I mean, they have a good understanding compared to a lot of other um, institutions that are Christian, so to speak. So bear that in mind. Um, I really like it here. I hope to bring my mum here next week, hopefully. Bear in mind that they don't only do water fasting, that's their speciality, but they also do juice fasting and if you can't fast, then they also do food, like um, plant-based food, but it's, they work on the SOS principle, so there's no salt, no oil, no sugar. It's just sort of plain food. So before they, whatever diet they put you on, they will physically assess you. If you've got kidney issues, most likely you can't fast, so they'll put you on food and so on. So it's catered to each individual. And there are medically supervised doctors, you know, on site during the day, they check on you in the morning, they check on you in the evening. Um, yeah, it's a pretty safe environment. It's, so, it's, it's, just, it's just a nice centre. I, I, I've loved it here, to be honest. Um, the people here are so friendly and kind um, and I definitely want to bring my family members to something like this because I think they'll be more receptive in terms of health rather than going to a, a religious institute. That's just how they are at this time. Everyone's different. Bear in mind they're not Adventists. Oh and another thing that I thought was quite interesting is that the Adventist health message has come up a few times in some of the talks which I thought was really interesting and that was based upon the study that Guy did, forgot his name, on the blue zone where it showed how Adventists lived the longest, one of the groups that lived the longest in Loma Linda because of their diet, plant-based and so on. So the health message of Adventism here is held in high regard, believe it or not. And even with some of the talks that I've been having with some of the people here, a lot of them have brought it up, you know, and made reference to some of the famous Adventists of today who have lived long, like that guy who was a, still a surgeon and he was 90 something years old, forgotten his name, and the other lady who was 101 years old but died recently, who was doing weights and so on. So, like, they really, really respect the health message from Adventists and someone was even saying to me that they want to try and find an Adventist plant-based doctor and I said that it might be a struggle because, you know, things are changing, you know, as the church is sort of being moulded like the world. But yeah, it just shows to me how, you know, God really did bless us with this health message to be a light to the world. 
But sadly, we've become the towel and not the head, you know, based upon what's going on. Like the ministers drinking coffee, eating meat, you go to the congregations. A lot of people are overweight, look at the food that they're serving, even though it might be vegan, so to speak. It's so unhealthy, covered in oil, which is why many of us are getting sicker and so on. You know, so that was eye-opening That was eye -opening to me. And it shows how we really have failed the Lord miserably miserably in that sense because god gave us sorry i keep getting disturbed but it just shows how we have failed miserably miserably in that sense and god is going to hold us accountable that's why god is i believe maybe they don't know as much as we do in terms of christ but i see god really blessing institutions like this by through his natural means of medicine nature they are adopting them and people are getting better, people are getting well, you know, and the Lord told us these things like a hundred years ago. So, um, yeah, it's a shame, you know, but it's just life. We were told these things are to happen. But yeah, um, as I mentioned, I, I really enjoy it here and I recommend it. And um, I'm happy I've done my water fast. I know some people are saying water fasting is bad and so on, but for me, I've experienced nothing but good benefits. My skin is like, oh my goodness, so soft all over. It feels like baby skin. My hair's grown, funnily enough, during fasting. I slept really well the last two days as well. And I've just been eating carbs as well as before. If I ate carbs um, during the day with no fat, it would mess up my sleep. So I was having certain blood sugar issues so far that seems to be going really well digestion is working great you know so i love it another point i quickly want to mention is that with the water fasting here they follow the natural hygiene method which means that they don't do enemas during um water fasting you sort of just let your body deal with what it needs to deal with and what you'll find is that during a fast you probably won't have any bowel movement but that's naturally, that's natural. But when you do start eating, you know, and you eat the right foods, like the fruits and the greens, then the first bowel movement might be hard, but afterwards it will just work efficiently, like natural, natural, you know. And they don't resort to enemas and stuff like that. It's only in certain situations. So example, if after the fast, if you don't go to the bathroom after four days to do a bowel movement, then they would say give you an enema or give you something to drink to take that but usually in most cases patients have their bowel movements return a lot more healthier and stronger a few days after the fast during the refeeding process so i thought i'll just add that as well and um yeah i think that's it that's all about that's so i think that's about it from me um yeah as i said before love America, love the States. I don't know what it is, maybe it's me. I mean, I don't know what it is, but everyone's just so nice here. I don't know what it is, but everyone's just so nice here. Amazing experience and yeah. I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye.